Hey, today I have a Tracy Litt in the house, a quantum success mentor who helps visionary women, entrepreneurs, and leaders. We are talking about dealing with fear today and how to shift your relationship with it so you can have everything you want. There's never a moment in time where your mind, body, and nervous system is on your side. There is never a moment in time, and this is understanding the science of change and fear. There's never a moment in time where your system's like, yeah, go do that unknown thing. Get it, girl. Right? <laughs> There's never a moment in time where your mind, body, and nervous system is like, yes, let's thrive. Because that's not its function. Its function is, did she wake up today and breathe? Winning. <laughs> Right. And what's really challenging and ironic about that is everything that you desire lives in the great unknown. Everything that is in your vision, all of your more, all of your different, that leap from nine to five into your entrepreneurial vision, into your capacity, into playing with your unlimited potential. And even pay attention to my language, right? Because what happens is the mind and the body starts to make you feel tight and tense, and it starts to offer you all of this limiting thinking. I mean, self-doubt is not actually doubt. Self-doubt is what fear uses in an effort to get you to believe your thinking and get you to sit back down and not move. So if to your system, safe equals the same, so you can aspire, you can know you're amazing at what you do. You are ready to take this from side hustle to full blown business. And what you get to know is, oh, I'm gonna stop waiting for my mind and system to be on board. Oh shit. Actually, when it's against me, it means I'm going after it. When it's feeding me, who do you think you are? What if it's too much of a risk? What if it sucks? What if you don't get clients? What if you don't know how to lead that way? What if you actually get successful and then you outperform how your family made money? And what kind of leader do you need to be? And all of these things, that is your fear using doubt in an effort to get you to attach to your thinking and stay put. And what you get to know is this, and I want you to jot this down. Thoughts are options, not facts. And if you continue to let your mind lead, you will be Groundhog's Day for the rest of time. You are energy. You are divine. You are capable beyond measure. You are actually unlimited. And the only limits you experience are the ones you continue to attach to, the ones that you perceive, and the ones that you use in an effort to continue to feel safe. So many of the women in my community are not used to putting themselves first. So what, what would you say to them? It's not your fault and there's nothing wrong with you. We become who we are because of what's modeled, what we are told is right, what we are fed about being a good girl, a good woman. So let's appreciate the vast difference in I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a breadwinner, I can make as much money as I choose to make. I can shine. I know that I get to prioritize myself because I'm the generator and I'm the common denominator and I'm the asset and everything is coming out of me. And that what we're up against is an infrastructure and a belief system and a society that has fed anything but that. You know, I was listening to one of your podcasts and you were talking about the self-sabotage and receivership. Will you tell my audience a little bit about that? The first thing I just want to say about self-sabotage is that it's self-protection. I don't like sabotage because it feels like hard. Like self-sabotage actually sounds like you're trying to screw yourself over. Okay, there's nothing wrong with you. You are not broken. You don't need to be fixed. And if you are currently doing any kind of transformational internal work through that lens, you need to stop and we need to talk. Because it's like you're trying to work yourself out of quicksand. And it's a fucking lie. And you're not trying to sabotage yourself. You are the one who is directing your mind and your body and allowing your soul's objective to come through. So then let's break up with the phrase sabotage. When you talk about receivership, it's such an interesting topic because it flies in the face of everything we were taught to be as strong, resilient women who, you got it. You're juggling the plates and the other plates and then someone asks you, can you? And I guess, of course I can, right? Because there's still a part of you that's proving and earning your worth. Right. And there's a part of you that believes that asking for help and receiving support means weakness or you're going to be found out somehow. Right. Or what does it mean about you? I have to control everything to be loved. And we start to look into our earlier wounds, which is important. 
Receivership is part of your goddessness. When you break up with the hard and the hustle and that constantness and the overfunctioning that we're all so freaking masterful of, you realize that receiving is asking and allowing for help. If I'm going to be like my next level of her, she's a phenomenal receiver, right? Because this is about embodying the woman you're becoming. It also means your people pleasing has to die. Your martyrdom has to go. Your control needs to be killed. And when we look at the science of change and what it means to intentionally evolve, you are actively killing off parts of your old identity. Yeah. And so what about that resistance to invest in yourself? A lot of it lives in the core that our lack of belief in self starts to come through. You don't think it'll work for you, even though you've seen 17 testimonials of other women that it's worked for. Somehow you're fucking different. Somehow, but not for you. It worked for all of them, but it doesn't work for you. Right. And fear of success is pervasive. I like when you say you are limitless, just like knowing that I'm not shackled to what people did before me, what my parents modeled to me, that like I'm capable of creating change and having it all. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. And it's like, we have to transcend the past because you cannot generate a new future living in the emotions and narratives of your past, right? The past doesn't even exist anymore, but you keep like bringing it back to life when you think about it, right? And then you're activated or triggered and you're experiencing an emotion of your past, right? And when we really examine belief structure and worldviews, you became who you are and you didn't even choose any of it. You did not choose you, your, your family, your coaches, your rabbis or priests, the events that occurred and the meaning that your mind made of it. That's what is informing you. That's what's living in your subconscious. You didn't choose it consciously, intentionally. How amazing is it to think, wait a minute, I get to choose? Oh, whew, yeah, you get to choose all of it. My future self wants money. Is that okay? Please. Yes. Thank you. I love money. I love money. And that's another component. By the way, money is not the problem. Money is a symptom of something deeper, usually connected to your attachment styles because you think money is security. But let me tell you something. You're the security. You get to show up and shift your relationship with money. And you don't do that, ironically, by focusing on money. You do that by coming inside and working on you. I have freelancers who don't think there's enough. There's not enough jobs. It's too, too late for them. Um, there's not enough work. There's not enough good clients. What do you say to them? That is simply a perceived limitation that you hold. That is not real. That is not truth. It might be perceived true for you because you live in your perceptions, not in what's actually real, right? And that is being driven by where you came from and the belief structure you hold and shit that happened to you and shit that happened to your family and other kind of contributors to that because that's lack in its purest form. Lack is there's not enough. There's not enough. There's not enough time. There's not enough money. There's not enough resources. And at the core, I am saying I am not enough, which then brings us back to come and work on yourself. Everything else heals when you do, right? The truth is, is that everything is available to us all the time. Don't let judgment come in. We teach something called your NJO, your non-judgmental observer. You have to start to allow yourself to observe yourself and collect the data without judgment. So when you then are in that story, right? There isn't enough, there isn't enough, there isn't enough, there isn't enough. Your ego is built to prove you right. So you're going to continue to see through your brain and the way your particular activating system works and, and the way that your um, thalamus registers information and your primal brain and all these things. You're only going to see that because it's literally what you're asking for. You always get what you ask for. Yeah. And then the more you focus on the fact that there's not enough, you drive more of that. So then you keep what's available to you further away, thus perpetuating the chase so that you can turn around and go, see, I told you there wasn't enough. And the more you put your focus on it, what you're focusing on is the lack of it, the absence of it. And if that's where your focus and attention is, then you're going to create more absence and more lack. Uh, the freelancer who is brand new, who's filled with the fear and the inadequacy, and it's that chicken and the egg, who will hire me when I have no experience? Mm. How, do, how do you address that? You just made me think of my mom who I lost when I was 24 because... She used to always say, managers aren't born managers. Mm -hmm. You have to become a manager. Somebody gets to give you your first 
frontline job and then your first management job, right? And then you become that. So I think I just want to start with that because it just came shooting through, right? How can you not be a beginner when you're in the beginning? So just that kind of awareness first so that you don't go down the rabbit hole about it. So that's just like first awareness and then recognizing who you are and how incredibly valuable you are. And that if it's not yours, you wouldn't be called to it. If, if it wasn't yours, you wouldn't have the passion, the drive, the excitement to deliver it, to serve it, to be in that line of, um, of being a service provider of that thing. And then you also get to go within yourself and go, wait a second. I need to let my next level think for me. So let's just play with this for a minute through that lens of you're brand new, right? So like, you haven't gotten hired yet, right? So then doesn't it make sense based on everything that we talked about so far that your mind would start offering you thoughts that feel limiting and doubtful? Because when you do take that first gig and that second gig, it still feels new. And even the third, you're moving out of your zone of familiar into your unfamiliar. You're becoming her, the version of you who is so you can remember, you can look back and you go, oh my God, a year ago, I remember I was so afraid and I was thinking who would hire me. And now, now I, 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 I love that part of me and it was so silly, but it was necessary. And Look at what I'm doing now. And now I am full time in my business and I have soulmate clients and I wake up every day so intentionally, so passionately. I love my life. And the key is, is be her now, right? That next level version of you would never allow you to think, well, who's going to hire me? She'd be like, girl, you are fire. Let's go. Put your shit out there because people are waiting for you right now, right? And this is how you start to realize, okay, I'm actually creating my lived experience. What do we do next? What's next? What's next? Okay, here's where we need to start. So Expander, I'm so excited about Expander. Um, Expander is an ebook. It is 57 pages. It's beautifully designed. And what I am walking you through is it's called Expander for Trailblazing Women Building a New World, which is every single one of you. And it walks you through what a paradigm is, the anatomy of a paradigm, the origin of a paradigm, because understanding is power. And then I introduce seven of the most limiting paradigms interfering with incredible, magnificent, visionary women. And then I give you seven replacements of expanded higher consciousness, progressive paradigms to start to embody. You can go to the expanderbook.com and grab your ebook. Do you have any parting words for us? You are capable. Like you are, it makes me emotional because what I do every day is I get to reflect back to you, the version of you that's there, right? Like that's how I get to see you. It's how I see all of my current clients as well. And it's just like, I know, I know it feels like you're operating here, like in who you are, but, you, but you're here, you're here and it's safe to feel safe and it's safe to have it all. And it's safe to allow yourself to receive and be open. And there are people out there right now that need you, that, that like they need you. You, you have a gift, you have a uniqueness. There aren't enough people like you that do what you do there. This world is expanding and, and literally your uniqueness is a match for the people that only you can serve that emily cannot serve and the other person in the mastermind cannot serve it has to be you so stop making it about you and make it about who's waiting for you because that's that's what's real that's the essence of the unicorn thanks for joining us today i hope you are feeling invigorated powerful and ready to go embody your next level self Hey, if you love this episode, go check out the full podcast episode on unicornsunitepodcast.com or check out the link below to connect with your favorite podcast app.